Milo the Meerkat and the Mystery of the Savannah An AI Generated Tale of Friendship and Adventure Chapter 1 The Mysterious Map Milo was out foraging for food with his family when he stumbled upon a strange object hidden in the roots of an old acacia tree. It was a map covered in strange symbols and markings. Milo couldn't believe his luck. He had always dreamed of going on an adventure and discovering hidden treasures. What's this? Milo asked, picking up the map and examining it closely. It looks like a map, said his sister Mary. But what would a map be doing out here in the savannah? Milo's mind raced with excitement. He was convinced that this map led to a hidden treasure somewhere in the savannah. He just knew it. I have to follow this map, Milo declared. I have to find out where it leads. Are you crazy? Mary asked. We don't even know what's on the other side of the savannah. It could be dangerous. But Milo was determined. He'd always wanted to go on an adventure, and this was his chance. I'll be fine, Milo said confidently. I'll be back before you know it. And when I return, I'll be the most famous meerkat in the land. And with that, Milo set out on his journey, the mysterious map clutched in his paws. Chapter 2. Setting out on the journey. Milo packed a small bag with supplies and set off across the savannah. The map clutched tightly in his paw. He knew it would be a long journey and he would need all the help he could get. As he walked, Milo couldn't help but feel a little nervous. He had never been this far from home before, and he had no idea what lay ahead, but he was determined to see this adventure through to the end. Just as Milo was starting to feel alone and vulnerable, he heard a voice behind him. Where do you think you're going, little meerkat? Milo turned around to see a hyena standing behind him, a mischievous glint in her eye. I'm going on an adventure, Milo said proudly. I'm going to find a treasure. The hyena chuckled. Well, you're going to need some help if you want to survive out here in the savannah. And I just happen to be the best guide around. Milo was hesitant. He knew that meerkats and hyenas didn't usually get along. But he was desperate, and he knew he couldn't do this alone. What's your name? Milo asked. Sophia, the hyena replied. And you are? I'm Milo, Milo said, offering his paw in friendship. Sophia hesitated for a moment, then took Milo's paw in hers. Well, Milo, it looks like we're in this together. Let's go find that treasure. And with that, Milo and Sophia set off across the savannah, filled with excitement and determination. They had no idea what dangers and challenges lay ahead, but they were ready for whatever the savannah had in store for them. Chapter 3. The First Obstacle Milo and Sophia had been travelling for several days, and they were starting to get tired. They had been careful to avoid the larger predators of the savannah, but they knew they couldn't be too careful. As they walked, they suddenly heard a rustling in the grass behind them. Milo turned around to see a pack of hungry jackals emerging from the underbrush, their eyes fixed on Milo and Sophia. Oh no, Milo said, his heart racing. We have to get out of here. Relax, Sophia said calmly. I've dealt with jackals before. We just have to outsmart them. The jackals circled Milo and Sophia, snarling and snapping their teeth. Milo knew they had to come up with a plan, and fast. We could try to run, Milo suggested. Too risky, Sophia said. They'll catch us before we get very far. Then what do we do? Milo asked. Sophia thought for a moment, then had an idea. I have a plan. Follow my lead. Sophia let out a loud, menacing growl, causing the jackals to pause for a moment. Then she charged at them, baring her teeth. The jackals yelped in surprise and ran off into the grass, leaving Milo and Sophia alone once again. Well done. Milo said, relieved. I didn't know you could be so intimidating. There's a lot you don't know about me, Milo, Sophia said with a wink. Now, let's get out of here before those jackals come back. Milo and Sophia hurried off across the savannah, grateful to have survived their first obstacle. They knew that there would be many more challenges ahead, but they were ready to face them together. Chapter 4. The Oasis Milo and Sophia had been travelling for days and they were starting to feel the effects of the scorching savannah sun. They were hot, thirsty, and exhausted. Just when they thought they couldn't go on any further, they stumbled upon a beautiful oasis in the midst of the desert. The crystal clear water looked inviting, and the shade of the palm trees offered a welcome respite from the heat. This is perfect, Milo said, collapsing under a tree. We can rest here for the night. Agreed, Sophia said, taking a long drink from the cool water. 
I don't think I could go on any further today. Milo and Sophia settled down for the night, grateful for the chance to rest. They were just drifting off to sleep when a loud noise startled them away. What was that? Milo asked, sitting up with a start. I don't know, Sophia said, peering into the darkness. But I have a feeling we're about to find out. Suddenly, a loud trumpeting noise filled the air, causing Milo and Sophia to jump in fear. They had never heard anything like it before. What could that be? Milo asked nervously. I don't know, Sophia said, trying to calm her racing heart. But whatever it is, it sounds big. Milo and Sophia waited in silence, straining to hear any other sounds. The trumpeting noise had stopped, and all was quiet once again. I think it's gone, Milo said, sighing with relief. I hope so, Sophia said, settling back down to sleep. I'm not sure I could handle any more surprises tonight. Milo and Sophia fell back into a peaceful sleep, unaware that the mysterious trumpeting noise was just the beginning of their adventure. Chapter 5 The Elephant's Trunk Milo and Sophia were enjoying a peaceful breakfast at their campsite when they heard a loud trumpeting noise. They looked up to see an elephant approaching, its trunk raised high. Don't be afraid, the elephant said in a surprisingly gentle voice. I'm not going to hurt you. I just got lost and couldn't find my way back to my herd. Milo and Sophia couldn't believe their ears. The elephant was talking to them. You can talk, Milo asked in amazement. Of course, the elephant replied. My name is Misha, and if you don't mind, I'll just be on my way. Sorry for the disturbance. Milo and Sophia watched as the elephant turned to leave, but before it could disappear into the brush, Milo had an idea. Wait, Milo called out. Why don't you come with us? We're on a journey to find a treasure, and we could use a strong and wise companion like you. The elephant considered Milo's offer for a moment, then nodded its head. I appreciate the offer, the elephant said, but I can't abandon my herd. They're probably worried sick about me. However, I could join you for today and help you on your journey. My name is Misha, by the way. Milo and Sophia were thrilled. They had never had an elephant as a companion before. They quickly packed up their campsite and set off across the savannah, with Misha by their side. They had no idea what dangers and challenges lay ahead, but they were ready for whatever the savannah had in store for them. Chapter 6 The Rolling Stones Milo and Sophia said goodbye to Misha the elephant with heavy hearts. They had enjoyed having such a wise and strong companion on their journey, but they knew it was time for Misha to return to his herd. As Milo and Sophia journeyed deeper into the savannah, they came across a strange sight, a field full of rolling stones, Moving on their own accord, Milo and Sophia were amazed. They had never seen anything like it before. Do you think it's some kind of magic? Milo asked, his eyes wide. I don't know, Sophia said, approaching the stones cautiously. But I have a feeling we're about to find out. Milo and Sophia watched in amazement as the stones rolled past them, seemingly with a mind of their own. They had no idea how it was possible, but they were determined to find out. I have an idea, Sophia said a mischievous glint in her eye. Let's follow the stones and see where they lead us. Milo hesitated for a moment. He wasn't sure it was a good idea to follow something they didn't understand. But Sophia was already on the move, and Milo knew he couldn't let her go alone. Okay, Milo said, swallowing his fear. Let's do it. Milo and Sophia followed the rolling stones, keeping a safe distance behind them. They had no idea where the stones would lead them, but they were excited to see what lay ahead. Chapter 7. The Lion's Den Milo and Sophia had been following the rolling stones for hours, and they were starting to get tired. They had no idea where the stones were leading them, but they were determined to see it through. Just as they were starting to lose hope, they came across a lion's den. The lion, a massive male with a mane of golden fur, stood blocking their path, a fierce look in his eyes. Halt! the lion growled. What business do you have in my territory? Milo and Sophia froze in fear. They knew they had to be careful. A lion's bite was deadly. We're just passing through, sir, Sophia said, trying to keep her voice steady. We meant no disrespect, the lion snarled, his eyes fixed on Milo and Sophia. I don't believe you, the lion said. You're hiding something. I can sense it. Show me your map. Milo's heart raced. They couldn't let the lion see their map. It was their only clue to the treasure. We don't have a map. Milo said, trying to sound convincing. The lion roared, his eyes flashing. Don't lie to me, the lion growled. I can smell the map on you. Hand it over, or suffer the consequences. 
Milo and Sophia knew they had to act fast. They looked at each other, and in that moment, they knew what they had to do. OK, OK, Milo said, holding up his hands in surrender. We'll give you the map. Just don't hurt us. Sophia reached into her pack and slowly withdrew the map, trying not to shake. But as she handed it to the lion, she palmed a small rock that she had picked up earlier. The lion snatched the map from Sophia's paw, his eyes gleaming. The lion examined the map, his eyes shining with greed. He had no idea that it was a fake. Sophia had quickly swapped it out with the rock when the lion wasn't looking. Ah! the lion exclaimed. I knew you were hiding something. Now be gone from my territory before I change my mind. Milo and Sophia didn't need to be told twice. They turned and fled, their hearts racing. They knew they had to find another way to get their map back, ag, and fast. They ran as fast as they could, not daring to look back until they were sure they were safe. They were safe. When they finally stopped to catch their breath, Milo turned to Sophia with a huge grin on his face. You were brilliant, Milo exclaimed. I can't believe we got the map back. It was nothing, Sophia said, grinning back. I just hope the lion doesn't figure out he's been tricked. Milo and Sophia continued on their journey, their hearts filled with excitement and determination. Chapter 8 The Hidden Valley Milo and Sophia had been following the Rolling Stones for days, and they were starting to lose hope. They had no idea where the stones were leading them, and their supplies were running low. Just when they were about to give up, they came across a hidden valley nestled in the midst of the savannah. They knew immediately that this was the place they had been searching for. The treasure had to be here. But as they approached the valley, they were confronted by a pack of hyenas, their teeth bared and snarling. Milo and Sophia knew they had to be careful. Hyenas were known to be fierce and unpredictable. What do you want? The lead hyena snarled, her eyes fixed on Milo and Sophia. We're just passing through, Sophia said, trying to sound confident. We mean no harm. The lead hyena snorted, her eyes narrowed. We don't believe you, she said. This valley is guarded by the hyena clan, and no one enters without our permission. Now turn around and leave, before we decide to make you our next meal. Milo and Sophia knew they had to think fast. They couldn't turn back now. They were so close to the treasure. Please, we come in peace, Milo said, holding out his paws. We've been on a journey to find a treasure, and we believe it's hidden in this valley. We just want to find it and be on our way. We understand if you're hesitant to let us in, Sophia said, but we assure you we mean no harm. We just want to find the treasure and be on our way. The lead hyena looked at Milo and Sophia for a long moment, then sighed. Very well, she said. You may enter the valley, but be warned. If you cause any trouble, you'll answer to me. Milo and Sophia were overjoyed. They had done it. They had convinced the hyenas to let them into the hidden valley. They thanked the lead hyena and the rest of the pack, then stepped into the valley, their hearts filled with excitement and wonder. They had no idea what they would find, but they were ready for whatever the valley had in store for them. Chapter 9. The Treasure Milo and Sophia couldn't believe their luck. They had finally reached the hidden valley, and the treasure had to be close by. They scanned the valley, their eyes searching for any sign of where the treasure might be. Suddenly, they heard a loud hissing noise, and a giant python emerged from the bushes, blocking their path. The python's eyes shone with intelligence, and its coils were tightly wound around a chest filled with gold and jewels. Who dares to disturb my treasure? The python hissed, its eyes fixed on Milo and Sophia. We're sorry. We didn't mean to intrude, Milo said, trying to sound calm. We're just on a journey to find a treasure, and we believe it's hidden in this valley. The python snorted, its tongue flicking in and out. Well, you've found it, the python said, but it's mine, and I'm not about to give it up without a fight. Milo and Sophia knew they had to think fast. They couldn't fight the python. It was too powerful. They needed to find another way to defeat it. Please, we don't want to fight, Sophia said, her eyes pleading. Is there any way we can peacefully come to an agreement? The python considered Sophia's words for a moment, then nodded. Very well the python said. I'll make you a deal. What kind of deal? Milo asked, his heart racing. I'll give you the treasure, the python said, if you can solve my riddle. If you get it wrong, you'll have to leave the valley empty-handed. Milo and Sophia looked at each other, their hearts racing. They knew they had to succeed. They had come too far to turn back now. We accept your deal, 
Sophia said, her voice steady. What's the riddle? The python smiled, its tongue flicking in and out. Here it is, the python said. I'm not alive, but I grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air. I don't have a mouth, but water kills me. What am I? Milo and Sophia thought for a moment. Then Milo's face lit up with understanding. A fire, Milo exclaimed. The python nodded, its eyes gleaming. Correct, the python said. You may have the treasure. Milo and Sophia couldn't believe their luck. They had done it. They had solved the riddle and claimed the treasure. They thanked the python and carefully lifted the chest, filled with excitement and gratitude. They knew their journey was close to being over, and both started their way home. Chapter 10 The Triumphant Return Milo and Sophia couldn't believe it. They had finally made it home, the treasure safely in tow. They had been gone for so long, and they were eager to share their adventures with the other animals in the savannah. As they approached their home, they were greeted by a crowd of cheering animals. Meerkats, hyenas, elephants, and more had come out to welcome them back, and Milo and Sophia couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and support. Milo, Sophia, a group of meerkats shouted. You're heroes! Milo and Sophia grinned at each other, their hearts filled with joy. We couldn't have done it without each other, Milo said, turning to Sophia. And we couldn't have done it without the help of our friends, Sophia added, looking at the crowd. The animals cheered even louder, and Milo and Sophia knew that they had truly made a difference in the savannah. As they shared their adventures with the other animals, and distributed the treasure among the community, Milo and Sophia, Milo and Sophia knew that they had cemented their place as the most famous meerkats in the land and they knew that they would always be the best of friends, no matter what challenges the savannah had in store for them in the future.